Pisa has the Leaning Tower and Paris has the Eiffel Tower and New York has the Water Tower. This is Frank Runyon for the New York Times. There are 10 to 20,000 water tanks on rooftops across New York City. They're the primary source of drinking water for many city dwellers. And yet the tanks are breeding grounds for bacteria and regulation of them is rarely enforced. If part of my drinking water came from this, it would certainly change the way I drank water in the city of New York. And nothing to do with the municipal water supply, it has to do with the tank. The Times tested 14 tanks in 12 buildings in Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Queens. Eight of the tank samples were positive for coliform bacteria, and five had E. coli. The health department, which is responsible for ensuring that building owners inspect and test their tanks for bacteria, refused our on-camera interview requests. Though an official told us that they are satisfied with the inspection requirements as they are right now. But Dr. Steven Edberg, a leading medical and public health microbiologist who invented Cololert, one of the world's most widely used tests for bacteria, says there's cause for concern. E. coli has only one source. It is only there because some animal is defecating in that place. It's the only way it gets there. You have a bunch of two by fours that get built out here as framework. Right. Steven Silver is a third generation tank man with American Pipe and Tank. When the roof on the tank is in deteriorated condition and it's open to the atmosphere, you have dust, dirt, pigeons, garbage. We've seen people living in roof tanks. You see mice and vermin in the roof tanks. And this is for the most part people's drinking water that the people in the building don't even know about. New York City's water is gravity fed from reservoirs upstate. But this aqueduct system can only deliver water up to six stories. So to provide water pressure to the upper floors, water is pumped from the basement to a rooftop tank before draining directly into taps. Water tanks can be exposed to the elements for up to 50 years. So to keep them in working order, they need to be maintained. New York City require that these tanks are cleaned and disinfected a minimum of once a year because this is a building's primary drinking water source. So to prevent algae and bacteria from flourishing, which it, it would under normal conditions, you have a tank of water that's baking out in the sunshine all summer long, you're gonna get things growing in the tank. We had the chance to drop our camera into a tank on a building above Times Square. We could see a layer of sediment that had built up at the bottom. This is a common sight in water tanks around the city. Sediment should be flushed out every year. It's so inexpensive to maintain the code by cleaning your water tank and taking a water sample. Cleaning only costs a few hundred dollars. But the problem is, most of New York City's water tanks aren't cleaned every year, as required by law. A city survey of 100 buildings showed that nearly 60% did not comply. It has been a problem. There has been a less than adequate compliance, in my view. Uh, but we need buildings to step it up. We need to ensure that they are doing what they are required to do under the law. The DEP is largely responsible for the city's water, until it gets to individual buildings. And then, it's up to the landlords to maintain water quality. When tank companies are called to clean a water tank, they drain the tank, scrub the wood inside, and add a disinfectant, like Clorox bleach, to finish the job. It's also standard practice for them to take a water sample to test for bacteria. We took a sample from this tank just before it was cleaned. We took it to a lab for an independent analysis. So the fact that the sample is yellow means it's positive for coliform. Uh -huh. And uh, once it's positive for coliform, we put the UV light on it. And if it fluoresces, it's positive for E. coli. So what does that mean that it's positive for bacteria and E. coli? It means, at least from where the sample was collected, it's, it's not fit for human consumption. The health department says that the contamination the New York Times found in samples from the bottom of the water tank would not normally enter the water supply because drinking water exits through a pipe near the middle of the tank. The experts we spoke with disagreed. In most of the world, water is stored in large vessels. 
Um, and the problem is that uh, if any part of the tank gets contaminated, all of it's contaminated. So if you have sediment in the bottom of a water tank, then whatever's in the sediment's going to get in the water. Most likely, yeah, for okay. agitation. Okay. Even if it's just, you know, on the very bottom of a tank and they're pulling it from the middle? It's, yeah, it's correct. But with all these potential contaminants, why don't we see more people getting sick? It's a very hard in a population as large and dense as New York to ascertain even reasonably large illness outbreaks. You'd literally have to have entire apartment buildings getting sick at the same time. It'd disappear, but they're there. Despite billions of dollars spent to protect New York's drinking water, the delivery system has a weak spot. The thousands of unmaintained, untested, and forgotten water tanks.